Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to share with you 10 of my top favorite home learning products to try and make this crazy time of distance learning that much easier. If you're new here, my name is Bailey. I am a mom of three and I am just trying to figure all this out just like everybody else. Um, my channel is all about um, providing your kids with opportunities to learn through play, playing with purpose. And right now when they're constantly in front of their screens, they're having a harder time trying to figure this stuff out without the hands-on learning activity. So these products um, that you can get from your Target or your Dollar Tree or even Amazon, these products could help you um, help your children and provide them with more um, hands-on opportunities to learn these particular subjects that they're uh, dealing with in school right now. Also, these 10 products are things that can be used for just about every age group and every subject um, within the early childhood education realm. Um, and so that's why these are the ones I'm recommending and you can pick and choose which ones will work for you and your children. So let's jump right into it, shall we? So number one would be a whiteboard. This is something that we have been using a lot during distance learning time. And you can have something as simple as a little one here that you can get from your Dollar Tree or this one came from the Target Dollar Spot. Um, or we also have a big one that we have on our wall that I've been using a lot as well. Um, and we got that one at Costco for about $20, I believe it was a few years ago, but I will find links to anything I mention and put them down in the description box below for you um, to check out for yourself. Um, but these can be used literally for anything and even in place of paper so that you're not wasting paper as well. Um, any subject, any age group, and we've been using the large one in particular so that it can be like a reference board for them for whatever it is they're currently working on, you know, in that week or that month. Um, so at the end of last year in particular, I had one half of the board for my um, now third grader talking about arrays. And then on the other side or on the other half of the board was for my um, now first grader and we had phonics blends on the other side and just kept it up so that they could reference it whenever they were talking about it or using it during their homework time and so that's why I'm really recommending a whiteboard um, as an option for you. Another handy tool that can actually work with a whiteboard would be your magnetic letters and so I have some just in a regular box here. I also have shapes and numbers um, but I'm recommending uh, magnetic letters um, that you can use on your whiteboard if it's magnetic um, for, again, a bunch of activities that can be used for spelling, uh, just letter recognition, uh, phonics, uh, the numbers can be used for math activities, all of these things. Um, and so, again, it's a quick thing that you could have at their workstation for when they're working with their teachers as well. Um, and so I just think this is a quick little option. We have a set in here. The lowercase letters are from the Melissa and Doug set. And then our capital letters are actually from just the Dollar Tree. And we've had these for years. And actually, Aiden received a set from his teacher this current school year um, that's actually really nice. So this is like a foam magnetic letter set and it comes with both the capital and lowercase and numbers and the math symbols like plus and minus. Um, so I thought this set was really cool. I'll see if I can find it on Amazon. I don't know if that's where it's from. Uh, and so right now to make it quick and easy for him while he's working with his teacher instead of just having them thrown in this box. Um, that way the teacher's not waiting on him. I went ahead and put all of his letters inside of our phonics box. This is something I have shown before on my channel. I have a video that I can link to for you. And ordinarily inside of here are his phonics objects. And I will mention that in a minute because that is another item that I want to show you. But I took those objects out and put his magnetic letters in here just to make it quick and easy for um, while he's working with his teacher. And so just again, I recommend magnetic letters. Um, yeah. So my next 
product or item that I feel like you should have um, in your stash of educational items would be my phonics objects. Again, they're normally kept inside of that box. Um, right now, I just threw them inside of this little bag to hold on to. But these objects are literally random items that would just work with the letters of the alphabet or the phonics blends. So we have a little acorn here that we got. I threw in a shell from when we went to the beach, a little um, nickel, random items. And I also have a bunch of these little miniature animal figures and you can easily find these at the Dollar Tree um, or any of your other um, animal figure sets that you have, but just so many random objects in here. Um, that I just think would be great to use during your language arts activities and to have as like just a bonus um, uh, product or material for you to use during your language arts activity time. So speaking of animal figures, that is another item I feel like everyone should have in their stash. So I actually have both miniature animal figures, a whole box full, and we have a whole drawer full of our large ones. And so we've been using these since my kids were toddlers and have been using them so often over the years. Um, the little ones here mostly are from Safari LTD tubes, which I can link to for you, or the uh, Terra by Batat brand that you can find at Target. Uh, all of our ocean figures are from that. And then also random uh, little sets from like Dollar Tree. Uh, so all kinds of things here. And then again, you can use these when learning about the different animals, about the different habitats. You can use them when you're doing your language arts or having them as little things for when they're reading books. Um, if they're reading a book about, let's say, Arctic animals, let's pull all these out and they can play with them while we're reading the book. Um, different things like that um, are why I really like these. Oh, and sensory bins as well. We really like these with sensory bins. And then again, with our large animals, almost all of them have come from the Dollar Tree. Um, we have some dinosaurs that we've just kind of gotten. And then we also have, let's see if I can find one, one of the... Um, large bug sets from Amazon as well that I think was a birthday present, but I know it's from Amazon. Um, and again, we've used these for all kinds of things, but my favorite activity to do with these is, um, especially the dinosaurs, is measurement activities. That's like one of my favorite things to do with my kids when they're little, is measuring these um, animal figures. One product that probably everyone already has in their home that could easily be used for educational activities would be Legos. And so I just have one example for you here of how we use Legos. And I actually got this idea from another YouTube channel, I'm pretty sure, um, from Fun Hands-On Learning. I will link her channel down below. Great channel. Go check it out if you haven't seen her before. Um, but I believe I got this from her. And so what she did here, let me pull out an example for you. I just organized them in this box to make it easier. Um, but, oh, that's backwards. Hold up. Okay. Just a second. So with these letters, she has put them on the different sized Legos here. That way you can see exactly how the G goes under the line that you're writing and the B goes all the way up. And so I like this particular activity a lot to help with that because my kids still struggle with that concept. And so I really like taking it from a writing activity to a more hands-on so that they can really understand that concept. But again, Legos can be used for anything and for any subject, for math, um, comparing uh, I, just a million things. Go check out Pinterest for a million ideas. Also, not just these little tiny Legos, but I would also consider the Lego Duplos and even Mega Blocks. We used Mega Blocks a lot when my kids were toddlers for different like puzzle type activities as well. So definitely building blocks or Legos are a great fundamental uh, item to use. Another item that would be recommended by just about any teacher out there would be Play-Doh. I, in particular, really like incorporating Play-Doh into our activities so that they can really work on their fine motor skills and their hand strength. Just molding this into whatever it is you're working on um, is giving them that opportunity to be working with their hands and even distracting them and calming them down a little and kind of bringing them back in if they're starting to get wild. I feel like this can help with that as well. So I really enjoy incorporating Play-Doh or molding dough or whatever. It doesn't have to be the name brand, but 
Um, this can be used again around any subject, if you're doing counting, if you're trying to form letters, if you're just trying to make a play scene for a story. Um, again, invaluable. And I did want to mention that there's one Play-Doh set or kit that I had gotten um, a while ago that I really enjoy. And so I will hopefully try and find it on Amazon because I honestly, I think I got it at Target. But I will see if it's on Amazon. But this is a mass Play-Doh kit that came with these different play mats so that you can work on counting and measuring. These are double-sided mats. Um, that work on uh, shape differentiation and color sorting and graphs. Um, and then with this set, it came with a bunch of different tools as well. Um, so it comes with these little tubes that you saw in the pictures here. And then again, a bunch of other tools um, and stencils. And so we just have everything in this box um, thrown in together. So I don't remember what all was in that particular kit. Um, but again, I thought that was a really cool one that it was designated for math. Um, so I will try and find the link for it. This next product is kind of a funny one, but when I was looking at things for my kids to do when they were little, dot markers was a very popular thing to use um, for preschool activities on Pinterest. Um, and at the time, I didn't want to spend money on the name brand. And so when I saw these at the Dollar Tree, they are bingo markers. That's just what I decided to grab until I was ready to buy the name brand and just kind of figured we would use them up um, in the meantime. I bought these ones, these ones right here, probably six years ago. They are still full and, and they will not dry out. They are never ending bingo markers. So we have been using them for years. Um, so you could go the name brand route I recommend it. I guess I've never used them because this is all I've ever used, but these are also great. <laughs> so you pick and choose which ones you want to get, but I do think dot markers are really fun. We've done all kinds of activities with them. In particular, I really like using these in notebooking um, activities. I, I've done active, uh, I've done a video on our old notebooking uh, situation or setup, so I can link to that as well if you're interested, but these are really fun to use as well. The next item that I think would be really helpful is snap cubes. These particular ones are from Learning Resources, and this set is a set of 50. Um, and we have always had, they're right behind me here, we have always had a bunch of these Unifix cubes. Um, but the reason why I'm recommending the snap cubes over these is that these, let me pull them out, have holes on each side so that then you can manipulate it in different ways, um, which proves helpful for using them across different subjects as well. So Unifix cubes or the snap cubes are usually um, meant for being a math manipulative, using them as counters or using them to measure or whatever the case may be. These are usually math manipulatives, but I've also um, used them in uh, the language arts subject as well for forming letters. So if you wanted to make the letter L um, or even building the, the numbers if you wanted to make a zero. Um, but the fact that you can manipulate them in different ways or making shapes, sorry, I'm going all over the place, but these can be used in a whole lot more ways than the Unifix cubes can. So I recommend either one. We have a whole bunch of these and we have used them over the years, but I do think these would be a better choice. Um, so yeah, I will link these down below. The next item that I think is really helpful, especially just being like a homework helper, um, if your child is working on just a math worksheet or assignment through their computer, um, I feel like this is a great item just to have on the table for them to use if they need it type thing. Um, and that would be a rec and rec. I hope I'm saying that right. I like to just call it an arithmetic rack or a math rack <laughs> because it's easier. Um, but I like this particular set because of the red and white um, beads here. And there is a reason for that. It's so that they can group count and easily see that five plus one more equals six. Another option would also be an abacus. We have a little one here that goes to 50, but you can use this in the same way. I just really prefer this one so that they can work on their uh, group count or skip counting. Um, it's just a, a faster visual for them. And I've also 
uh, made my own before and I've done a separate video on this as well using beads from the Dollar Tree and bamboo skewers. And so we, again, have used this uh, before we got these, we just got these recently. Um, and so this is just something great to have on the table for them to use if they need it. And finally, my number one favorite item that I've ever gotten for my kids would be our Learning Resources Movable Hundreds Board. I have mentioned this thing so many times on my channel because it really is my favorite thing to use. Math can be a tricky subject and so I really love having this on hand to use as a reference or a tool for extra practice with whatever subject it is they're working on or topic that they're working on within the math subject. And so why I like this thing so much and I am going to do a separate video on this board. I think I've said that before but I really am going to do a separate video on this showing all the different things you can do with it. Um, but I love it so much because it has the slots for each individual number. So you've seen hundreds boards before on other channels probably, um, but they're usually the Montessori wooden hundreds boards. And I did not want that because there weren't individual slots and the tiles could easily shift. If you were to bump the table or something, they would move. And I knew that would just completely bother um, one of my sons. And so I knew I couldn't do that. So when I found this one, I immediately grabbed it. They even have one that goes up to 120 as well, but I wanted to just stick with the 100. Um, but going to 120 is also an option. But we have one side that has the numbers and one side that is blank so that this can um, go up with you in difficulty um, as they learn how to use it. And so that's a great option. And then it comes with the tiles with the numbers and then it also comes with translucent tiles as well we have red and blue and so all of these things together provide a ton of different opportunities and activities that you can come up with um to use with this board and so i absolutely love this thing if you get nothing else get this um, it's just a great resource to have on hand when you need it so those are my 10 items that I would highly recommend having in your home for home learning, whether we're doing distance learning, if you are a homeschooler, or if you're just a mom like me that likes to have these things on hand for when your kids need them for extra practice, um, these are the products I would recommend. You do not have to get them all by any means, but go through and pick and choose a few just to have. Um, we all need the extra help right now. so. Uh, these are the ones I recommend. If you liked this video, could you give it a thumbs up? It would help me out. Costs you nothing. All you gotta do is click. And while you're at it, click the red subscribe button so that you can see more videos from me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.